Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at a topic called the Law of Signs and the document we're going to be working with is the Practice Law of Signs. Now to understand the Law of Signs, it helps to understand how it relates to what we've done previously. In the past, you guys have learned about sine, cosine, and tangent. What was the purpose of sine, cosine, and tangent? Well, up until now, it was to find unknown sides, and sometimes we're using the inverses, unknown angles, within right triangles, okay? Now, the problem is, as you guys are well aware, not all triangles are right triangles. So, if we want to apply trigonometry, right, to uh, triangles that are either acute or obtuse, we're gonna have to use something slightly different. And what we're gonna use in this case is called the law of sines. So first let's go over a very basic working definition of the law of sines. Law of sines. There we go. All right guys, so what the law of sines says is that the sine of an angle, and this could, I'm just calling it A, but it could be any angle, over the side it's across from is equal to the sine of another angle, right? In this case, I'll just say it's angle B, over the side it's across from, and that's also equal to the sine of the third angle over the side it's across from. Now, what the heck does this actually look like? Let's just get like a very, very basic picture here, all right? So if I were to call this A, this B, and this C, all right, using capital letters, the side across from A would be little a, the side across from big B would be little b, and the side across from big C would be little c, all right? So what we're saying is that the sine of this angle divided by the length of this side across from it is equal to the sine of this angle divided by the side across from it is equal to the sine of this angle divided by the side across from it. Now, in order to use the law of sines, there's one thing we must have, all right? And this is very, very important. I'm actually gonna write it down here. What we must have is what I call an angle side pair. What exactly does that mean? Well, if I have angle A, I would also want to have the side that's across from it, all right? So in order to use the law of sines, I must have at least one pair, okay? This is actually a relatively easy uh, geometric theorem to use. It's a lot of just plugging in and using the calculator, all right? So with that being said, let's take a look at example number one, example number one from the practice worksheet, okay? All right, number one looks something like this, if I remember correctly, I hope so. 98.4, uh, this is 24.6, they tell me that this over here is X, and um, this is 376. All right guys, first things first, do I have an angle side pair? In other words, do I have an angle that I know across from a side that I know? Why, yes I do. Check and check. So let's go ahead and start setting up the law of signs. I'm gonna ignore the letters A, B, and C because quite frankly, they're completely and utterly irrelevant. All you need to know is sine of an angle over a side equals sine of an angle over a side. So I'm gonna start off by saying sine 98.4 divided by 376. Why am I doing that? Well, that's what the law tells me, the sine of an angle over the side across from it. Okay, now we have a problem though. This is an unknown side, but I need to know an angle over here. 
and they don't seem to have given me that. I wonder how I could find it. Luckily for us, in Unit 5, we learned that Triangle Sum Theorem says that there are 180 degrees inside a triangle. So if I want to figure out what the heck this pesky angle is, all I have to do is subtract these two angles from 180. So let's do that now. All right, so when I do that, I get this angle is actually 57 degrees. Yay! Okay, so now I can fill in the other kind of like fraction over here. So sine of 57 over the unknown side, which is x. Now this may look kind of terrifying, but in reality, it's nothing different than what we dealt with in unit seven. How do I solve an equation that involves proportions? I use the technique of cross multiplication. For those who kind of uh, forgot what cross multiplication is, let's just review briefly. All right, cross multiplying, you just multiply the diagonals, right? It's kind of like, a, like an atom for lack of a better expression. So here's what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get x times sine 98.4 equals 376 times sine 57. Now, as with any equation, what's my ultimate goal? Well, I wanna get x by itself, so how do I get rid of a multiplied x, or bleh, how do I get rid of a multiplied sine 98.4? I'm going to divide both sides by sine, that's a horrible sine, 98.4. Okay, so this is honestly, guys, just gonna be a lot of decimals, so be prepared. So let's find sine 57 first. So using my calculator, I'm gonna type in 57, hit the sine key. I'm gonna multiply that by 376. So let me do that now. Okay, so on top here, I'm gonna have three, let me see. Yeah, 315.3401335. And on the bottom, let's find out what sine 98.4 is. So I'm gonna do 98.4 and then hit the sign key, and that is uh, 0.98927, you get the idea. And at long last, oh my gosh, so many decibels. I'm just gonna do the division here, uh, 0.98927, and lo and behold, guys, I get around 318.8. So again, that's a super, super long-winded way of saying that I can find unknown sides and unknown angles using the law of sines for non-right triangles. It'll work on right triangles too, but it's just that it's very useful because I don't have to have a right triangle, all right? So think of the law of sines as a way of compensating for the weaknesses of regular sine, cosine, and tangent. Normally, when I'm doing the whole opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse and all that, I can only do it with right triangles. Law of sines, as weird as it looks, it actually applies to any triangle, whether it be acute, right, or obtuse. Let's take a look at one more example. And the example we're gonna look at is number five on the practice worksheet. Once again, we're gonna take a look at number five on the practice worksheet. Now this problem on the surface is very, very similar to the one we just did with one key difference. And we'll talk about that very briefly, all right? We have, and this is nice, an angle side pair, 120 and uh, 45, right? Now, the difference is what they're asking me to find here is not a side, they're asking me to find an angle, okay? So I just want you to keep that in mind. We're gonna use exactly the same method, which means plugging into this beautiful equation up here, but at the very end, there's gonna be one thing we have to remember about inverse trig, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. All right, first things first, let's set up are proportions. Angle, side. So I'm going to say sine 
120 over 45, right? The sine of the angle divided by the side across equals sine theta. I don't really know what that is yet, but hopefully I'll find out later, over 36. Thus far, nothing different, guys. All right, exactly the same method as we did, for example, number one. Okay, in order to solve a proportional equation, normally we cross multiply. Some of you guys here might see an easier way by just multiplying both sides by the 36, and you'd be absolutely right. But again, pretend I didn't say that. So that's going to give me 36 sine 120 equals 45 sine theta. In order to get the sine theta by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by the multiplied 45. All right, so before I try to deal with that whole sine theta mess, let's actually put this in the calculator, shall we? All right, so I'm going to do the sine 120. So I type in 120 and I hit the sine key. Then times 36. All right, and then divided by 45. And I get this really weird decimal here. 0.6928 something others equals sine theta. Okay, so we're almost there, guys. We're like nine tenths of the way there. Problem is, they didn't ask me for sine theta. What they asked me for was the value of the angle itself. So now we have to go back to unit nine. Let's think, guys, let's think. How do I get rid of a sine? Hint, hint, what's like the inverse of sine? Oh my gosh, it's the inverse sine function. So what I do is I keep this decimal on my calculator, I hit the second key, and then I hit sine because that's gonna activate the inverse sine. And when I do that, lo and behold, what do I get? I get that the theta is around 43.9 degrees. All right, kind of weird, but it, it works. So let's sum it up. The law of sines says that the sine of an angle divided by the side that it's across from equals the sine of another angle divided by the side it's across from. In order to use it, we must have at least one angle side pair, meaning an angle and the side that's across from it. The reason we use the law of sines and the reason it's helpful is that it helps compensate for the weaknesses of regular trigonometry. Normally, in the past, we've always restricted ourselves to right triangles. With the law of sines, not only can we find unknown sines and unknown angles for right triangles, but we can also find them for acute triangles and obtuse triangles as well.